I didn't buy it. He did. I bought it. All right, Bobby J is in the house again, and he got his new machine. Just came from Global Machinery with brand new FE head on it. We're going to try it out today, but we're going to do a little size comparison. The TL12 with the standard high flow Moultrie head on it versus Bobby J's machine, JCB One Arm Bandit. <coughs> one Arm Bandit, the robot machine. Yeah, 3TS, 8T. Uh, this is the with the telescopic boom. Um, 74 horse, 300 foot pounds of torque. Uh, no DPF, no DAF fluid, none of that. Does have EGR. Pretty nice machine. Uh, been pretty happy with it so far. And we're going with them, um, getting it set up for mulching and agriculture. I'm doing agriculture stuff. And I have a really want to, I got a really good application. I think I'm hoping this is going to work out well for me. Um, and because it's a 74 horse machine, we had to go with the DML. I wanted the UML, but Jim down there at Global said he didn't think my machine would run the UML efficiently. So we're DML. To translate that, not to bash the machine, but it's a smaller mulcher head to fit the horsepower machine size. It's got a smaller drum, right? And so it's got the smaller teeth. Smaller drum. <clears throat> so that it can, it just behaves better. That's why it's not, you know, a little guy throwing around a big arm or something like that. I think the benefits for the one arm bandit, you know, I really like the 12, the Takuchi machine because the door opens vertically. So it's easy to get in and out of no matter where the booms fit. But look at this thing, side holster right here. Side holster, yeah. I think that's just like getting in a regular tractor. Yeah. Then the cab's lower. So you're not worried about hitting stuff, but he's still got pretty good cab space. And if you're worried about the reach, you just hit a button, extendo. Extendo. So you get Bobby J to hop in this thing, do a little bit of driving around and show the motor functions of it. And I'm really looking forward to trying this machine out because I've seen it twice at his house, once in the garage and then once at nine o'clock at night when we were loading the bed on this truck of mine because we got distracted and drove all over the place. And Well, we wanted to go see the ocean. That's what it was. That was just coincidence. <laughs> we went to go buy a tractor attachment and we ended up at some, what was that? On Highway 1 on a farm right along the Pacific Ocean. If you're driving the tractor and you fall asleep and drive out of the field, yeah. you're in the Pacific Ocean. What Crazy. Were they, what were they farming? Uh, Brussels sprouts. Everybody's favorite. Brussels sprouts. I got some footage I'll put in there. That, <laughs> it was a complete... Where the hell are we at? Kind of a moment. Yeah. And, uh, but anyway, let's see the inside of this thing a little bit and then we'll drive it. Well, I didn't think this was on today's agenda. Pretty cool. See how people do things different or do things at all. Trailers are side dump units. <laughs> Try and lift them up. Jumps into the back house. Okay, I just want to do a size comparison and talk horsepower just a little bit. The high flow machine, ignore the bar that's bent. The stupid tree lost its top and hit the 12. I thought it was fine, but it, it bent the, the handlebar. So, TL12 with the bucket on it claims to be 12,800 pounds. This particular machine is about 112 horsepower, so it puts you over 75 requires you to run death but got the high flow pushing mid 30 gallon per minute at around 3300 psi for an overall skid steer machine it handles the head fairly well not the best but for price comparison and all that pretty happy with this machine for an overall skid steer bobby j horsepower weight on this old girl so <clears throat> 74 horse and because i got a jcb i gotta throw in that she makes 300 foot pounds of torque <laughs> but yes it is a 74 horse machine it weighs 12,300 pounds approximately with no attachment and that's a heavy girl it's it is Heavier i, I mean it is it's funny is when you know just <clears throat> now you it's a 74 horse machine put a dml on and then this morning we fired it up it overspun that rotor all the way up to 3800 rpm and like whoa slow this thing and then he asked me what's the flow on this thing again 
and it's like it's like one of those things that's kind of on the pendulum almost could run a you mm -hmm. but anyway it's 3300 psi at 33 gallons on the high flow so basically in a lump sum depending on your tuning it's going to be very close on pressure and flow to the 12 it just doesn't have another 30 plus horsepower back in it yep that's the thing the horsepower isn't there it's kind of like you know like that old school talking about horsepower versus torque horsepower is how hard you hit the wall and torque's how hard you keep pushing through the wall, through the wall. having that extra 30 horsepower it's gonna be a difference but fire this thing up let's go kill that tree that landed on the 12. A little air pressure buzzer goes off let her rip got the float on swamp donkey tracks on it so basically it's like the Mechalek the brand JCB wanted the bigger engine but they didn't want to reconfigure the machine to put all the extra emissions on it so they'll just detune an engine so that they can put it in their machine being that it's got less than 75 horsepower they don't have to put the blue def crap in it so you can get you can, the dealer can't, a reflash for the engine to make it be the engine's rated horsepower, which is kind of cool. All right, let's see how he does. First time running mulch head on it. I don't know if he's ran a mulch head before. Maybe he has, maybe he hasn't. It's way open.
This one, when you bog the head or you're tracking around with the head, trying to regain RPM, the tracks start to bog down the engine, which yeah. it's, one's got to go, one's you know, go, yeah. but I like how the head is willing to get out of trouble immediately. Okay. So the fact that it's still got motor functions for the boom is, oh, but yeah. yeah, I think for, that was like a six inch ballpark oak. Yeah. I think it did pretty good. It's got brand new freaking carbides on yeah. it, so it's gonna help. Like yeah, I think it did pretty good. All right, he's gonna finish off a couple of those little pieces. Just gave him a crash course on how to mulch, best I could describe it. It just, you gotta get a feel for it over time. But little techniques like this, getting chunks of firewood. Told him push ahead back, roll it, and uh, see if it turns them into splinters. Push it down a little bit more. Nope, might have done her. Put him sideways. He was gonna go with the uh, Takahuchi, but he liked the idea of this, and he demoed one because it's got the telescoping reach, and I think that's a big bonus. If you're not gonna be molting all the time, but he's got the smaller molter head to max maximize his production with this particular machine, I think it fits a perfect. The uh, other benefit is that low roof height. So when he's doing his orchard work, he can fit in amongst the trees a lot better. And I think that's a big bonus. The 12 is not necessarily a tall machine, but I think this machine's pretty good. It's expensive, just as expensive as a bigger skid steer, because it's got that one arm. I'm sure that losing one arm and all that engineering and extra stuff, they want more money for it. But I like it. And I don't say that lightly. I don't jump in machines very often and go, that's pretty good. I like it. That head uh, behaved very well. I think it handled the big stuff just fine. You'll find out later on how everything behaves, but pretty slick little rig. Wish you could do the telescoping thing, but you can't do it with high flow. Uh, everybody's got their own preferences and their own ideas how they want to make stuff work and I'm not trying to give advice on anybody buying a machine I'm just going to tell the story of my experiences and my buddy's experiences you know I, I told him 12 is a good machine but he went out and he demoed this one and uh, one thing that I'm glad that he he changed his mind on is he got the rubber track first he was going to go tire I'm really glad that he went rubber track because I I think this, that's one thing I would say. You probably, 
probably should get the track. Yeah, I'm glad he did. Gotta go check out Bobby J's channel. I'll put it right here. He puts a lot of effort into his videos. He's got a lot of passion into it. I like to see his channel grow. Uh, show him the different and the drum. It's basically the same style, just on a smaller scale. The drum isn't as wide, so that allows it to rev back up quicker, but it's got dual point carbides, just a little bit smaller than this one here. I think the head width is about the same. I think it did pretty good though, Bobby J. Nothing's cheap, so you can't really get around that. Everything's expensive. But for the versatility with this thing, you're not uh, full-time mulching. But when you do, I think this head actually kicks pretty good ass. I wanted to do the telescoping thing, but then I realized you can't. Can't. Yeah. Yeah, we can't. But I don't know. You know, the thing is about this machine is, yeah, for, for my lighter duty, not doing it, you know, try to make a living with. The other thing was I really like the Takahuchi machine, but the height of it, I'm in almond orchards. And so I was really concerned about the profile and rubbing branches. And you can't just be, it's not just damage to the equipment. If you're rubbing branches. Hurt product. May, June, July. Yeah, you're knocking off almonds off the tree and onto the ground. And yeah, you're, you're knocking money off the tree. So <clears throat> that was important. The profile was important. I don't know, just to take a guess, I would say over a foot. This one looks like it's on a mound right here though, so. The 12 is bigger. <laughs> the 12 is bigger. Yes, it is. It's a, it's a hunk of iron, which is funny though. They're pretty close in weight. Yeah. But I will say this. Both of these machines are awesome. You talk about, you know, what things cost and everything is expensive. Uh -huh. I mean, I, I think, I mean, everybody knows how good Takahuchi is. And I think the JCB is a great machine too. I mean, this is... I'm starting to like JCB just based on their level of commitment that they're trying to you know put advertisement and stuff out like that i feel like they're trying to make an even bigger stab at the market but I, I do like how wide the tracks are yeah i feel like she could do some floating is this is that iron oh yeah yeah she's got a bumper and you know i noticed earlier the undercarriage on these machines the front idler, the bogey wheels, and the, and the back idler, they almost look darn near identical. Yeah, I like that. Maybe that's why I like this machine, because it, uh, I don't really care so much for the uh, suspension kind of undercarriage on a skid steer. I don't, you know, I like the excavator feel where it's just planted. Yeah. You know, if you're trying to be comfortable in your machine and want suspension in a steel track or skid steer kind of thing i don't know if you're in the right deal Go. i went and drove uh went and looked at and went and drove around the yard an asv yeah uh, and i you know that thing went fast that was cool that thing's like one of the fastest skid steers you can or uh compact track loaders excuse mm. me uh you can buy but i just i looked at all that and then, i mean there was a whole bunch of bogey wheels in it, it just looked expensive mm -hmm. You got twice as the chance of one failing twice as high with twice as many of them. It's like, nah, give me the simple, rugged yeah. setup. And it's sure-footed when you get on anything steep. The front end doesn't want to suspend so that it, you know, it doesn't tilt even further. Uh, well, I'm going to wrap this one up. I do have a video I haven't released yet of the Lamb Track one arm Bandit. It is bigger than this by a lot. Yeah. Yeah, it is massive. And... It's honestly got the same kind of undercarriage as this, but with uh, torsion front and the front idler has some suspension. So it's suspension. You have to wait for that video. I ain't going to talk about it on here, but the one arm bandits, I really like them. And I think this machine's got a lot of potential, a lot of potential. But anyway, check out Bobby J's channel. Put it in the bottom. Bobby J Farms. It's going to be on the screen. <laughs> All right, we'll see you guys. Thanks for watching. New skids here. Later.